Hi everyone. Recently I did some maintenance at a place where I helped install a large off-grid solar system a few years ago. Off-grid means they're not connected to any power utilities. All of their electricity comes from solar panels and a backup generator. This time I remembered to bring my camera and actually had some time to use it. So I put together this video tour for you with some added details. I hope you enjoy it. Before showing the actual complex system with all its parts and wires, let's start with a diagram first. This house has a lot of appliances, or loads as we call them. Lights, TVs, microwave oven, UV light for killing bacteria and water, vacuum cleaner, and much more. There are two sources of power for all this. One are the solar panels on the roof, and the second is a large 10 kilowatt diesel generator. We can't just send power from the solar panels directly to the appliances though. We first store it in batteries. We use batteries because the solar panels don't generate much power when it's cloudy out, or at night. So we store the power in batteries, and whenever we need power, we take it from the batteries. And just like your cell phone uses a charger to control charging of its batteries, we use chargers here too. In this case, because we're getting a lot of power from the solar panels, we're using two charge controllers to control the charging. And in fact, in this case, we don't take the power directly from the batteries and send them to the breaker panel. We take the power stored in the batteries and run it through these inverters, which then send it out to the breaker panel and onto the various appliances. We do this because batteries supply DC electricity and our loads require AC electricity. The inverters convert from DC to AC. But here in southern Ontario, Canada, during some winters we might get an entire month without really good sunlight. That's why this system has the backup generator, to generate power when the solar panels can't keep the batteries charged. The power from the generator goes into the two inverters and from there to the breaker panel and then to the various appliances. We have two inverters because we have such a large generator. The inverters can also use power from the generator to charge the batteries, so the batteries can be charged using power from both the solar panels and the generator. Now let's take a tour of the actual system. Here are the solar panels on the roof. There are 12 panels, each rated at 175 watts, for a total of 2100 watts. Up top here you can see two boxes called combiner boxes. The wires from six of the panels go to one of the boxes, and the wires from the other six panels go to the other box. These wooden boxes were made by the roofers for aesthetic reasons. The actual combiner boxes are these white metal ones seen in this older photo. And here we'll add them to the diagram. They're called combiner boxes because they combine many wires from the panels into less wires, which then go inside the roof and the walls and down to where everything else is located. So here's the inside. Those two orange wires up there are the ones that come from those two boxes on the roof. And they run down to these two things here. These are called charge controllers. Actually labeled right there. And you can see the orange wires going into this white box that the charge controller is bolted to and the other one down to this one right here. And the charge controllers massage the power a little bit. And then you can see the red and black wires coming out there and here too. And they go into this box right here. And in this box all they're done is they're connected to uh, various points in here and these two uh, big breakers right here or disconnect switches. And then they come out in these two thick wires here which go down to the battery bank. That's the battery bank. Each one of these is, uh, is a uh, 4 volt battery, uh, 1100 um, amp hours. So that's one source of power is the solar. The other source of power is a big huge generator outside, a 10 kilowatt generator. And they're coming in on this cable right here, which goes into this side right here, which is just a big box with a bunch of wiring and connections and breakers and stuff in it. And uh, that goes to the two inverters. This one actually has two inverters. And the inverters uh, take the power from the generator and do two things with it. One is they, if the generator is running, they'll pass it through to that gray cable up there, to the main breaker panel and out to the various loads of the house. Um, the other thing they do with it is they take uh, what's left of that uh, power and they use it to charge the batteries and that's going to those same sets of cables right here that go down to the batteries right there. There's just two cables because it's a 10 kilowatt generator and we're going to be putting quite a bit of current through there 
and also it's a big, big, big battery bank, so if there's a short in there, the cables have to be able to handle it. And the disconnect switches here will trip 250 amp uh, breakers. Which <laughs> you're probably used to 15 amp breakers in your house. There are also some monitoring equipment right here. There's a little Xantrex uh, battery status monitor here um, that's just connected to. Um, it goes in a little connector here that goes into a little circuit that's attached to a shunt that's attached to these cables right here, uh, or one of the cables. Um, and that monitors the batteries basically, the flow of electricity going in and out. And then they represent it here as voltage and uh, current and accumulate it and so on. It gives you a fairly accurate idea of your battery voltage, which is currently, for the whole thing, currently it's uh, 26.9 volts. Uh, what else can I show you here? Oh yes, over here we have something called the Mate. And the Mate is simply an outback thing. It's a little monitor. And it's simply showing you certain values for the inverter. In this case we also have it programmed to automatically start the generator when the certain batteries use a certain voltage and stop it when they go uh, a bit, well, for, actually, for a certain period is the way we programmed it. Um, and there's all kinds of settings here, so you can use these to uh, do setting up of the inverters. Um, some stuff for the generator starting and stopping, it does monitoring, and it also does some stuff for uh, setting up and monitoring these. Although with these charge controllers here, they have their own um, um, key buttons right here for monitoring and controlling those. That's it, the power ultimately comes uh, in from the, oh, that's the other thing the inverter does, the power comes in um, uh, from the batteries here, goes into the inverters, the inverters then convert it to 200 volts, 240 volts AC on these cables right here, as I told you, which goes down into the breaker panel, and then that goes out to the house. So there we go, that's the whole system. Uh, the battery box is a, is a box. It has holes in the bottom here for letting air in all around it. And then right here is the air with the little fan there for setting the air out uh, doors uh, because the battery, uh, you can hear it right there, because batteries um, uh, produce hydrogen and oxygen as an output and you want to vent the hydrogen. And back here is the 10 kilowatt generator. And uh, some of these lines here make their way up somewhere. <laughs> and there we go, going in the wall right here. That goes back to the uh, inverters where I showed you some thick cables before. While giving the tour, I glossed over some of the safety features, mainly all those breakers and switches. Here they all are in our diagram, and here they are in real life. Some of them are mainly here in case there's a short circuit somewhere. The breakers will trip, just like the breakers in your house would. Sometimes fuses are used instead. Another purpose is to isolate a piece of equipment in case you wanted to replace it or do some work on the wiring. For example, if you want to replace the charge controllers, then you would first open the breakers on the wires before and after them. And then there are the various lightning arresters. Here they are in the diagram. If lightning hits any of the parts on our roof, then the large electrical current from that lightning would be channeled to the ground instead of going through the equipment and damaging it. The only other safety feature is bonding all the equipment to ground. Unfortunately I didn't capture any good video of it since in this installation none of it is really visible without opening things up. Basically all the metal solar panel frames, metal cases and so on all have wires connected to them which lead to ground. That way if there's a short anywhere the dangerous electrical current would go to ground instead of anyone who might touch the metal. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. Be sure to subscribe if you like these videos. Also, have a look at my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more solar-related videos. You can find a lot of them in the Renewable Energy playlist, such as solar cooking, how nuclear fusion works in the sun to produce solar energy in the first place, more solar electricity videos, and more. See you soon!